Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, we've got a jam-packed show, including weird and wonderful rules of the Tour de France, weird and not wonderful hotels of the Tour de France, and the finalists for our Orbea Orca Aero giveaway. Plus, the truth about what happened to that Team Ineos bike that broke in half. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Tour de France riders have to be prepared for every eventuality, including large umbrellas. This is Tony Gallopin having his lack of preparation for this particular scenario cruelly exposed. At least he held it upright this time. That's incredible. The rider that was with him, that was Mathieu Mahoric from Bahrain Merida. We also learned this week, weirdly, that BMX has turned 50. Yes, last week marked the 50th anniversary of BMX because the first ever race reportedly took place on the 10th of July, 1969 in Palms Park, Santa Monica, California. That's a cracking bit of trivia there, Ollie. Uh, now, loyal GCN fans uh, will no doubt still be waiting uh, for all of that BMX content here on the channel. And for that, we can only apologize for the delay. I, I do consider myself a loyal GCN Fan, but I, I don't understand what you mean. Well, Dan actually promised in the first ever GCN show six and a half years ago that we would make BMX videos. Have a look. It's a complicated sport and it's not just about the person that crosses the line first, it's about the team behind them. Innovations, training, technology and everything else that goes with it. And we're not ignoring the rest of you, we're also going to be covering mountain biking, track racing and BMX. And BMX. And BMX. Unlike Dan, that particular show never gets old. <laughs> I could watch that every week. <laughs> we also learned this week that Pete Sagan must get his cool, calm demeanour from his mum because this is his dad. In and among all the feel-good clips like that and the awesome, exciting racing and the cool new tech at the Tour de France, there's often a story or two that raises the eyebrows. And for me this year, it was the images of the commissaires with a special contraption that was checking the sock height of the riders. Oh yes, that's right. So the referees from the International Governing Body of Cycling, the UCI, were indeed out in force, making sure that the riders conformed to the strict regulations governing sock height. And indeed, they were equipped with a Austin Montego windscreen wiper-esque contraption with which to measure them. Is this the weirdest rule that the UCI has? We're not so sure, but the UCI does love dishing out fines and washing them down with a hot cup of steaming rules. Yeah, with the added complexity that any fines are dished out in Swiss francs, so no one's entirely sure how much they're going to pay. And that is because the UCI is based in Switzerland. Yeah, so they're always seemingly random, non-round numbers, because once it's converted into currencies people actually use, like pounds, dollars or euros, it's, yeah, a weird number. But let's delve into the rules and see what else is weird. Also, a quick apology to everyone living in Switzerland and who operates in Swiss francs. Including Emma Pooley. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number 12.4.023, outlawing the theft of food or drink or any other goods during a bicycle event. Yes, according to the rules, if you do that, you'll get a thousand Swiss franc fine. How much is that worth? Not a clue. But it basically means that if you are gonna steal uh, food, drink, or goods, just make sure you do it with a street value over a thousand Swiss francs and you'll, you'll be all right. Smart thinking that. Uh, also in the same section uh, is a rule outlawing carrying glass containers in a bike race. Uh, that's 50 Swiss francs, that one. Yeah, now while, well, carrying a glass bottle in the back of your jersey, doesn't sound like a very sensible practice. It's quite interesting that those rules exist. And they exist because they hark back to the olden days of Grand Tours, when such practices were actually done. And like the cosmic microwave background radiation in the universe, the rules remain. Indeed they do. Uh, basically, 
back when teams had a little bit less support, so there weren't five members of staff for every single bike rider, racers had to be a little bit more self-sufficient, and so domestiques would have to dive off their bikes into roadside shops and bars to get extra sustenance, which is interestingly enough, actually a practice that our own <laughs> Daniel Lloyd continues to this very day. It does. Now, interestingly, there is actually a film called Stars and Their Water Carriers, which documents the 1973 Giro d'Italia. And in that documentary, you can see this practice happening. So if you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. And when they get the glass bottles with their caps on, the riders actually pop, uh, or some of them pop off the tops using their uh, headset like that, which is pretty cool. <laughs> that is very, <laughs> very cool, sexy. No, well, it's outlawed, isn't it? And there's a Swiss, 50 Swiss franc fine. A lot of fines this year for having a wee on the side of the road too. I mean, do that and you get yourself a 200 Swiss franc fine. I can't think of any other sports where you get fined for taking a leak. No, just takes the piss, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, no, but it, it does actually, I can't think of any other sports where you're forced to wee in public whilst taking part. I mean, no, well. Doesn't happen often, does it? <laughs> but there is a way around it what I'm reliably informed you have to do is, well, make sure you stop when the whole peloton stops for a wee, and then you just do it on mass, safety in numbers. That's right, very true. Uh, right, now are you familiar with UCI regulation E0219, discipline and procedures, paragraph 249.4? That's, well, that's one of my favourites. Yeah. I thought it was, yeah. Basically, you're not allowed to get a push from a spectator. If you do, you can either get a warning or a 20 Swiss franc fine. And this one, to my mind, Ollie, seems a little bit cruel because you don't really have much of an influence when you're getting a push. And you're certainly not allowed to hit the spectator <laughs> that's giving you a push because that, rightly so, is also outlawed. So it feels a bit like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, doesn't it? If you get, well, you could have an expensive summit finish, couldn't you? If you're getting pushed by a bunch of dudes. Yeah, that's it. Imagine that, like 16 euros, Slaps. like every <laughs> few meters. Yeah. There you go. Do you know what? It's, it's probably won't surprise many of you, but taking shortcuts isn't allowed either. Ah, yes, an unintentional detour from the race route that ends up constituting an advantage. Do this in a time trial and you'll get a 20 second time penalty. Do it in a stage race and you'll get relegated to last place for the stage. Wow. But I like this rule because it's, a, it's an example of how the enforcement of the rules can be so inconsistent. Many of you will remember Lance Armstrong famously well, cutting across a farmer's field in the 2003 Tour de France, stage nine, and uh, well, I remember, yeah. I remember it well, Ollie. I remember the debate, and of all the rules that Lance was breaking that day, and admittedly the commissaires weren't aware of all of them at the time, they decided not to penalise him for that one because actually he cut the corner through his bumpy field, uh, hopped very daintily over the uh, over the ditch, but then rejoined his little group pretty much exactly where he left, albeit trying to take them out as he jumped <laughs> back onto his bike. But you know, we'll just. Yeah. Over that well, little I, bit. I think in that particular instant, the, the, the right call was made. But then on the other hand, you have a high profile incident such as Richie Port in the 2015 Giro d'Italia. He suffered a puncture and was given a wheel by Simon Clark, who wasn't on his team. Now, according to the hot steaming cup of UCI rules, uh, you're not allowed to receive assistance from another team. And in doing so, Richie Port was given a two minute time penalty for the stage, on top of the 47 seconds he'd already lost from having the puncture, and also 200 Swiss franc fine. Ah, the 200 Swiss franc fine. Yeah, I think in that case, the, the race jury did indeed get it wrong, because it, it was actually a cracking example of great sportsmanship, the kind that should be celebrated, yeah. as opposed to penalizing him further than he'd already been penalized by getting a puncture in the first place. But, as much as I think they got it wrong that day, that's an example of one of the reasons I think cycling's actually so exciting, because it's so dynamic, isn't it? It's not like we're confined to a stadium where a rule is a rule because a line is always in exactly the same place. Like, cycling takes place in all conditions, in all places, and so commissaires do the best job that they can with the resources that they've got, the limited time, and so I, 
I just think it's kind of cool. Even though poor old Richie Port ended up quitting the Giro that year because his head fell off because he was three minutes out the back. Yeah. I I'd, yeah, I have to sort of agree, to be honest, in, in, in the sense that the best thing about sport for me is, well, unpredictability and then the drama that comes from that unpredictability and the fact that cycling, as you say, isn't confined to a stadium. It, it creates more unpredictability and uncertainty and... Yeah, we love it for it. I'm not sure we're allowed to agree on the GCN show, so uh, we'll have to take, we'll have to argue this uh, after uh, we start filming. Uh, what I'd be really really interested to know, Ollie, is what rules people think that actually we should have in the Tour de France yes. that we don't already. I mean, maybe you want to change the sock rule. That's probably a great good shout. Or indeed, maybe ban aero helmets for looking dorky, or I don't know, whatever it is. Let us know in the comments section. What would you actually like to ban? Or just fine, arbitrary amounts of Swiss francs. Legalized ninja stars. Mm, that would be interesting. It's now time for our weekly inspiration where you submit inspirational cycling photos for a chance to win 50, 75, or 100 pounds from our friends at Wiggle. Who have we got first, Cy? Si? Right, well, we've got first, but they're actually third, Ollie, if you see what I mean. Our podium will be in reverse order. This is Beachy Klista. I don't think it's his real name, from Edestal, Austria. Check that out. Lucky I could squeeze a short ride on Sunday evening in to finish the full and long weekend. I love that because it's a cool photo, but also because I totally get that whole, like, you know, making the most of it, evening rides, out with a mate, Beautiful, I love it. Yeah. Oh, and you've also got 50 quid, which, interestingly, is 61 pounds and 28 sweats, sorry, 61 Swiss francs and 28 cents, really? I guess. Yeah. Swiss uh, cents. Yeah, you can see it's the end of the day as well, because the nice long shadows yeah, as well. Golden hour. Nice. Uh, next place, winning 75 pounds of wiggle vouchers, is Joel who's riding up Mont Ventoux. Uh, he did the challenge Ventoux where you have to ascent it three times in a day. It was a tough undertaking, it's a hard climb. And uh, there it's he is. It's not often we've got like sort of smiley photos on GC Inspiration. Well, he did say that was his first ascent. Yeah, but he as it wasn't like, smiling as much. On that's the nice. Yeah. Just, a, just a guy looking cool on his bike, smiling, yeah. having a nice day out. I think that's great. Yeah, fantastic. And it's, yeah, it's perfectly composed there. You've got the tower in the background, oh, see? Nice. Yeah, like always thinking, Ollie. Uh, right, the winner this week, uh, worth a hundred pounds of wiggle vouchers, or about 120 Swiss francs, uh, is Cameron uh, out on his gravel bike in the Lake District of England. Uh, here we go. That is a that is a mega shot, isn't it? Yeah, I like that very much. I'm a well, I love the Lake District, as you know. I'm always banging on about it. You are talking about it a lot, Ollie. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I really like that. That's uh, that's a cracker looking out towards well near Keswick. Nice. Yeah, a well deserved win. If you want to take part in GCN Inspiration next week, uh, either upload your photo to the GCN uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video, or use the hashtag GCN Inspiration on Instagram. And best of luck. We will choose our favourites next week. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We shall begin Cycling Shorts this week with news that our very own James Lousley Williams, aka Hank, has hit the big time. Here he is appearing in the Telegraph's weekend supplement. Oh yes, check it out. Here is Hank with a horse. Yeah, fine young filly if ever you saw one. Uh, now. Permit me, if I may, to uh, read a small extract. <clears throat> uh, Lowsley Williams, not your typical Lord of the Manor, yada yada yada. Uh, he was ranked in the country's top 20 as a professional cyclist before he retired last year. Since then, this is, the, this is us, this is, uh, he has worked as a presenter on cycling network GCN, where he takes on daredevil feats. Does he? I don't know, you seen any of them? There we go. Uh, Hank made the big time. That nice. is a nice horse. I don't really know anything about horses, but that one it looks, looks like a good one, doesn't it? It does, and he's got a lovely pair of boots as well, which uh, which I've never seen before. But he will undoubtedly be forced to wear them into our uh, into our HQ at some point <laughs> soon. Well, away from the world of high society and glamour, back to the Tour de France, which isn't as glamorous as you may think, especially 
well, away from the racing. And we've been highly amused this week from social media posts coming out from journalists staying in hotels who are following the race. This post uh, was from a uh, friend of the channel, Kaylee Fretz from Cycling Tips, who's staying with the legendary Aussie writer, Rupert Guinness. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, that hotel room doesn't leave much to the imagination. I mean, I, yes, probably a bit too much <laughs> Rupert Guinness for, for everyone's taste. Uh, though they did fare better than, uh, than British journalist Ed Pickering. Uh, this was his hotel room the very next day. Why is he, who's he sharing with? Well, uh, hopefully no one, but uh, I believe that was a twin room. Uh, big case of, uh, right, just, just close your eyes and your nose and, uh, and probably your ears as well. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Carlton Kirby, uh, Eurosport commentator. Uh, well, he was all right though, because he was in the best hotel. Literally the best hotel. Wow. <laughs> Why is it that hotels that are called Best or Paradise so rarely are? But uh, anyway, Ned Bolting, another British commentator, he did actually fare slightly better. Although, as he himself pointed out, a lot of leopard print going on in, in his suite, actually. Yeah, uh, there. yeah. There's, even, there's even a picture of a leopard. I think that would be, uh, well, Del Boy and Cassandra definitely go for that one, wouldn't they? A couple of people got that joke, mate. Monge two, Simon. That's Monge right. Two. You know, but it's not just the journalists that have to put up with tough conditions at the Tour de France. One of the things I actually like best is that the riders uh, don't get to stay in five-star luxury as well, which, which keeps it real. Look, here's Garen Thomas uh, getting a massage in a room so small that uh, all of the beds and furniture has hastily been piled up into a corner there. And uh, apparently that is Wout Pools uh, wrapped up in that, uh, that <laughs> duvet, just having a little nap there in the corner. Yeah, well, they're not allowed luxury motorhomes either. As no. you may recall, well, in 2015, Richie Port had a luxury motorhome and the UCI made a rule saying you can't have it. So not only did he get his fine and 2,200 francs in a two minutes, he had his motorhome taken away. No, no. Dave Brailsford's got that now. Uh, anyway, speaking of Sky, or Team Ineos, uh, as it now is, of course, uh, a lot of chat about uh, their crash forward slash near miss on stage eight of the Tour de France, and specifically around how Gianni Moscon's bike got so much damage done to it. Now, initially, Molly, my theory was that it had actually acted as Geraint Thomas's personal crumple zone, uh, because you can see from this photo taken from Pimentanuno on Twitter uh, that Geraint's about six feet up there and, uh, well, pretty much making a direct landing on Moscon's rear triangle. Yeah, however, Cosmo Catalano from How the Race Was Won fame hit the nail on the head when he linked up footage from the race commissaire's car, the, the, uh, well, the race referee. And it shows that, well, you can see the bike in one piece on the ground as the commissaire's car approaches, followed shortly after by, well, a, a loud crunching sound. Yes, yes. So that does, I think, explain how the bike ended up getting so damaged. And it does make more sense than the Garrett Thomas theory because he's looking pretty lean at the moment. There's no way his ass is big enough to do that kind of damage. And I speak as someone uh, who once uh, wrote off an entire car with, with his ass. But uh, that's a story for another day. Interesting. Well, that's quite intriguing, that. Yeah. Now, at the top of the show, we told you that we would announce the finalists for our quite amazing Orbea Orca Aero competition, where we asked you to design a paint job using their Mayo facility on the website, where you can basically customize it to your heart's content. We've whittled it down to our favorite five, but now it's up to you to vote just up there which one you think should be the winner. And we'll start without further ado with Finn's Tour de France inspired paint job. What do you think of that one, Ollie? That's really cool. That is very nice. And it's gloss as well, I think, the white, which is important, keeps it clean. Yeah. And I like that he's gone for the shallower wheels. Really? Nice Controversial yeah. there. Uh, next up, we've got Gabriel's champion or bear, Matt Gold. Yes. That's uh, seriously bling, that one, isn't it? That's cracking, isn't it? A great choice of components on there. I like the kind of like the stealth black with gold. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Landers Outside is Calling is our next shortlist entry. Ooh. Not really sure the, on the, the outside bit. Well, green Isn't and blue. Green? Yeah, but I really like those shades. I think that looks, they just work. It's that really, does, really yeah, cool. it's pretty cool. Silvano's Flumen, which is uh, Latin for flow, apparently. Uh, he's a, a Giro fan and a sprinter, so uh, he tried to come up with a combo uh, that would be like his Chiclamino inspired jersey. Uh, Maglia, Maglia Chiclamino. Yeah. You know what I mean. 
So yeah, pink and sort of purple. But again, that, that works as a color combination. Then with the white or Bayer logo, like it. Stealthy, yeah, very nice. And then the last one, Hamish's Sunbeam. I think that is cool, mate. I, I prefer the gold one. Do you? Mm. I think I might go for a Sunbeam. But it's personally. not It's not up to us. It's not up to us. Well, we're out to vote, mate. Well, I know, but we don't get the casting vote. No, we don't. It's down to you. So there we go. There's your top five. Uh, just to recap, we've got Hamish's Sunbeam. We've got Silvano's Flumen. Uh, we've got Lander's Outsider's Calling. We've got Gabriel's Champion Orbea. And then Finn's Tour de France Inspired Paint Job. So there we go. Your top five. Vote away. And we'll announce the winner next week. Tech of the week now, and we have news of a new smart light, which comes from a company called The Beam, who got in touch, having done two successful Kickstarter campaigns in the past. This is now their third, and it's for a smart light called the Lucia. That's right, so they've given us a, a sample, a prototype we can show you. Uh, as you can see, it's a rear light. It mounts to your saddle rails, uh, and then it can be clipped or unclipped as necessary. They say that the light will be visible from up to a kilometre away and also from 180 degrees as well because the uh, the lighting element extends around the edges. Yeah, it's, well, it looks like it'd be nice and aero as well, the way it tucks into the back of the saddle rails. But it's got five different modes, apparently, is the, is the plan. And also, it's uh, it's got a light sensor so that it can adjust the brightness of the light depending on the, well, the lighting conditions that you're riding in. And an accelerator accelerate sensor as well, which means that it can effectively act as a brake light when you slow down, it can detect that, and also turn itself off uh, when you're not moving. That's right. It will last up to six hours on full beam and up to 20 hours on light detection mode, which is where it will flash if it senses that you're riding in the dark. And then if it senses you're riding in daylight, there'll be no constant light, but it will still operate as a brake light. Uh, and then it will charge back up again in two hours, which seems pretty rapid to me. And it also weighs just 39 grams, which is not very much at all. Uh, now, full retail price, the beam are saying it's gonna be 89 euros, but as is the way of Kickstarter, you can get in early and get it for 35 euros. So, steel. Uh, yeah, there we go. And nice. they'll be shipping in November 2019. So yeah, not long to wait. Uh, link to the Kickstarter campaign is in the description. Time now for hack forward slash bodge. First up, Nathan. Yo, Check yes. yourself, Si. Wowzers, what is that bodge, you may be asking yourself. Uh, well, Nathan said uh, he unfortunately broke his shifter, uh, needed to get his bike back on the road fast before a spare arrived, uh, so he zip-tied a mountain bike shifter to his handlebars and used a mountain bike brake lever uh, to uh, to replace his uh, his lever there, uh, which is, uh, yeah. that's a fantastic bodge, isn't it? He's on the road, he can still ride, but it's just awful at the same time. But hoods don't look very comfortable. No, they don't, do they? I but uh, yeah, top bodging there, I think. Top bodging, yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Craig uh, with his specialized chisel. What on earth's he done here? Well, Ollie, uh, since you asked, he's created a simple clamp for his back wheel uh, in his van there made of leftover rubber go-kart bumper mounts. Now, he says it grips the wheel perfectly. I'm not gonna argue. My problem with this, mate, is I don't have leftover rubber bumper go-kart mounts. So no. actually, I'd need to make a special trip to go and buy those with yeah. which to build it. So I for a I niche well. audience, that is a great hack. But, um, but otherwise, it's probably just... Um, more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, you just if yeah, if you're gonna have the trouble, just get something more suitable. Yeah, still, I like it. I like the fact that he's kind of upcycling uh, I'll let, waste I'll, products. What are you saying then, hack? Oh, I don't know, mate. I saw I knew this. Hack. Okay, yeah. done. Hack. <laughs> right. This right. one. <laughs> This is ingenious. Uh, so David wrote off his uh, his beautiful light speed bike in a crash uh, and has therefore relegated it to his indoor trainer. He said he had a set of mountain bike handlebars on, but he felt a little bit constrained. Uh, so he's put drops on, but in order to still use his mountain bike shifters on there, he's sort of added them on this kind of weird extension out front. Right, for an indoor training setup, brilliant. Yeah. Hack. That's really good. Absolutely. And again, upcycling, all for yeah. that. Yeah, all for embracing your parts bin. Yeah. Uh, sounds a bit more dodgy than I expected. But anyway, there we go. Uh, right, next up, Henrik. 
Now well, this is good. Do yeah. you want to do the honours, Ollie? Well, Henrik's in uh, in Denmark, and well, he's he's come up with a tubeless tire hack. Now, anyone that's set up tubeless tires, and I'm including myself in this, it, it can be a bit messy at times. Not for Henrik, though. Check this out. He's got a syringe with some well shrink wrap uh, tape on there, and a small uh, straw. What's the straw from? He's recycled he's, that from something. He well. said it's uh, a, a, a chain lube straw thing. He's oh, basically yeah. invented the reverse injector. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant hack from bits that he had lying around. Sucking used sealant out of your tire to make sure that it's nice and dry for when you take it off. And you can also use that to put sealant in as well. In a, in a An injector way. and a de-injector yeah. at the same time. I'm that's a hack. That is a we're great hack. Well, for hacks. We are week. indeed, yeah. Uh, lastly, we're going to finish up with a chain keeper. Now, uh, <clears throat> we've not had one of these for a while, but um, Ollie's just slipped it in there at the end. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, well, I've got to say, Javier de la Cruz, uh, that's actually not bad. I've often wondered whether I could repurpose a through axle as a chain keeper. Well, and yeah. he said, there we go. Well, that's the uh, thread tape there, which is again a common item found, found in the toolboxes of many a, a plumber. I guess, um, but yeah, I've got thread tape, and that is a good good use for it. It's a good, it's the right sort of size. I think that's uh, yeah. Again, that's recycling something. A oh, homemade chain keeper for uh, for free. There we go. Keeps that out of landfill. Good hack. Nice. Right, if you want to get involved with hack forward slash bodge next week, uh, hopefully you know what to do by now on Instagram or on Twitter. Use the hashtag GCN Hack, or of course our dedicated uploader. A lot of hacks this week. Yeah, what a week. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you could win yourself a GCN Camelback water bottle. That's right, all you've got to do is caption a photo that we're going to give you, and we will pick out the best one, and they will win a GCN water bottle. This was the photo from last week. Yeah, which was of Hodeg and Jakobsen from De Kernick Quick Quickstep. Pretty sure he's called Hodge, but never mind. Well. <laughs> he is. Honestly, he's called Hodge. Someone didn't believe me down in the comments, but he is. Hodge and Jakobsen. Anyway, teammates from Dekerni Quick Step. Uh, and the winning caption is from Juragamer132, who said, a, a little bit of teamwork never hurts anyone. Nice. Yes, I love it. I love it. They're sponsored by Lidl. Oh, I see. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. No, I think that's great. Uh, right, this is the photo for you all to get your teeth stuck into this week. So caption this one, put it in the comment section, and you might win a GCO water bottle. We, yeah, uh, we've come up with one together, haven't we, mate? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Vincenzo, why is it that they call you the shark of Messina? Because I'm so thin. Nailed it, mate. Get it? Yes. <laughs> I can hear everyone lolling. Okay, it's Ask a GCN Training now, that part of the show where we answer one of your training questions. The person who sent it in then gets a free three-month subscription to Zwift, which is pretty awesome, isn't it? So as well as getting the answer, you actually get a kickstart in your training. Anyway, so this week's question comes in from Paul Matthews. Uh, he is 44 years old with an FTP of 194 watts at 67 kilos. So some pretty good numbers there. On an average ride of 100 Ks, he said he goes between about 28 to 31 Ks an hour average. So again, good numbers there, but he'd like to improve his FTP. So we put that question uh, to one of the coaches at Zwift. They came back with, uh, with a pretty solid answer, I think. So firstly, uh, we need to kind of know a little bit more about how your week stacks up in terms of cycling. So if you're just doing like one 100K ride a week, then you might find you'd be better off getting a bit more consistency. So maybe doing like four shorter rides a week. Uh, and then the other thing is variety as well. So if you're always doing the same rides, then you won't actually improve. You'll always reach a plateau. So if you do like some really hard rides, some easy rides, some short rides, some long rides, then that'll kind of give your body the stimulus to really start improving. Yeah, variety is key in any training. But in terms of specifically targeting your FTP, there are a couple of schools of thought on, on what you can do. And the first one is, well, working above your FTP to drag it up. And the other one is working below or just below your FTP to push it up. And both methods have their merits 
and their place. So an example of working above it would be to do a session of say five by five minutes where each one of those five minutes is just above your FTP and then you'd have about two and a half minutes rest in between each one of those intervals. And the idea here is that you're accumulating lactate and in those hard above FTP efforts and your body's getting used to flushing it and processing it so you can work at that higher intensity. And then an example of a session just below your FTP would be something like four by 12 minutes uh, just below it and then sort of three minutes rest in between. And that would be at your kind of sweet spot intensity. But there are loads of sessions built into Zwift that are free uh, of examples of this kind of workout that you could either do on Zwift or well, you could take them out in the real world having used them for inspiration. Are you a pusher or a puller, Ollie? With your FTP? I like to go above. Yeah, so you see, when I was racing, I spent a lot of time pushing it up. And then since I retired from racing, all I seem to do is try and pull it up. Uh, and I think actually, I would have been better off mixing the two. Mm. But anyway, benefit of hindsight, uh, learn from our mistakes. Uh, anyway, if you would like your question answered next week, uh, stick it in the comment section with the hashtag AskGCNTraining. And remember, if you pick it out, you get yourself a free three month subscription to Zwift. Okay, before we get on to what is coming up on the channel over the next seven days, a quick look back at some of our favorite comments that you've been leading under the previous seven days videos. And in actually fact, in one case, uh, from a video from about five years ago. But anyway, we'll get on to that in a sec. Wowzers. Right, first up, Nick W commented under last week's GCN show, the wife's cutting comment of the week, has one of those Muppets really got a PhD? <laughs> This is brilliant. I wasn't here last week, uh, and I believe they're referring to you, Ollie. Well, they give them out to anyone these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, there we go. Great and, stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, Wan003 also commented under last week's show. Uh, now, bear in mind, the title of the show was Is the Tour de France Easier Than We Think? Well, my first thought when I read the title, well, Dan did it. <laughs> To be fair, mate, that was my first thought as well. Uh, hopefully that was one of the points uh, in there. Uh, right, and now, uh, hopefully by now you are well aware of the GCN Racing channel where we uh, have a dedicated home for our racing highlights. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Anyway, uh, on at the moment, uh, or last week obviously, was the Giro Rosa. Currently it's the Tour de France. Some great comments about that. Uh, Thomas Faber, my daughter has been glued. Women's racing, bravo, keep it coming. With love from the white mountains of New Hampshire uh, and GX uh, what we're living in Japan not owning a TV these updates are a real godsend I would tell you they've said dog send but I don't quite understand that anyway <laughs> many thanks yeah and air, air bum 787 says you're the first sexually provocative bike tire changer I've seen anywhere so redo so make a redo video of this just wearing your birthday suit. Did you do that one? Yes, so this is it. I don't think I've ever had such a weirdly complimentary and also slightly From derogatory. a five-year-old video. So you go back and check all the comments on your five-year-old well, when, when they're nice comments, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a notification automatically. Uh, no, uh, this uh, just popped up. Um, so there we go. Uh, no, uh, we're not gonna do any kind of naked bike maintenance videos. Uh, mainly because no one wants to see John Cannings in his birthday suit, uh, but I mean, frankly, no one wants to see anyone in their birthday suit changing a tyre. But uh, anyway, there we go. Uh, lastly, uh, CFO Sullivan, uh, under the uh, Superbike or Hyperbike video, said it's a bit amateur hour, guys, not to let the viewers know what happened to Simon's face. Uh, now, instead of listening to uh, to what he's saying or focusing on the mind-altering superbike, all I can think about is what happened to Simon's face. <laughs> uh, so uh, I will I will fill you in. Um, basically, having spent all morning learning how to jump with Blake Sampson and getting away with it, I then went out on my mountain bike in the evening and <laughs> fell off going uphill. Uh, and uh, I fell off at naught miles an hour. Uh, and then unfortunately for me, the trail had a big drop on one side and uh, and I fell off it basically and plummeted headfirst down a bank and landed on my on my face. Right, well coming up on the channel this week, firstly on Wednesday, devious tricks of the Tour de France riders. Thursday we have 10 pro cyclist training secrets. And on Friday is, well, Dirty Fridays, which isn't changing tires in your birthday suit. It's Jeremy Powers doing, well, gravel and cross themed content. That's right. Saturday, uh, we have what is Strava Summit? So we've got a close look at what that involves. Then on Sunday, the next frontier for the Tour de France. 
This is a gravel epic, right up to the summit of an Alp, which was uh, particularly particularly exciting. Uh, and then on Monday, of course, it's the GCN Racing News Show. Also, another quick shout out to the GCN Racing Channel for all your Tour de France highlights at the moment. Plus, we've got Tour de France content on GCN and GCN Tech at the moment as the race goes on. So it's a, it's a busy month. There's a lot of cycling videos for you to watch. Right, we're getting towards the end of the show, but we can't leave you without Extreme Corner. So if you haven't seen Can Roadies Get Rad yet, here is your answer. Wow. That Did I pretty, do a jump? That was a pretty good jump. You kind of nosed in a bit. Like, it felt like you pressed it too much and you went Well, there's your answer. No. Yeah, but I'll tell you something that is rad. So, our new striped t-shirts. Oh, They've yeah. gone down really well. Nice so segue. New, new designs in the GCN shop. So if you want to support the channel, well, head over to the GCN shop, grab some of the new t-shirts. Oh, that's oh, one. Right, Very much so. I like the red one. Well, that's just as well, isn't it? Uh, right, if you uh, haven't seen a Superbike or Hyperbike yet, then uh, we strongly recommend you do so. That's uh, checking out the new Canyon Ultimate Evo. Uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can get through to that video now. Otherwise, please give this video a big thumbs up. Excuse me, it's getting towards the end now. Uh, and also make sure, again, that you subscribe to the GCN Racing Channel.